Hello, and welcome back to the Community Summit. Um, this afternoon, we'll be running about the same format as this morning. We'll have um, a panel discussion by the Community Working Group. Um, then we have um, a couple of representatives of what I've been calling Drupal Media, but as was pointed out to me, people think of images and videos, um, and it's actually the public-facing Drupal resources. Um, so we'll have um, uh, John Picosi from Talking Drupal and Anoop John uh, from the Drop Times, and they'll be leading a discussion about that after um, the presentations. So to start us off, we have the community working group. <laughs> yeah, did you get that? <laughs> it's, it's dot, 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 dot. Hi, I'm Matthew Tift, and this is Amy June, and we are here today representing the Community Working Group. Ooh, we didn't even plan that. <laughs> we just finish each other's sentences. And we, well, I guess we could introduce ourselves first. Do you, do you want to say something about yourself? Sure. As I scroll through your Drupal.org profile. Um, so my name is Amy June Heinlein. I am a Drupal core mentor and help with a lot of organization of camps. I have had to file a co code of a, a conflict resolution report myself. And so I have lived experience about working with the CWG. And so I work with the CWG because it's a very important group to me. Um, I help do a lot of stuff in the community. I'm on the board for Drupal Colorado. I help organize Florida, Asheville and I'm on the program selection committee for a couple of different Drupal cons. Um, I no longer work in Drupal. I'm on, I work at the Linux Foundation, but the Drupal community is so near and dear to my heart, I still give 20 hours a week probably to Drupal. So um, yeah, that's me. So th but this, this group is near and dear to my heart. And you're the one who said earlier that you don't Drupal or something like that. Look at all of these issues. Well, I have no marketable Drupal skills either. And? But never mind to potential employers out there. <laughs> and uh, Aaron Winborn winner. Wow. See, I didn't even have to say it. <laughs> And I'm Matthew Tift, <laughs> and I'm just some guy. Uh, and I work at Lullabot, and I'm a back-end developer, and I've been helping out in one way or another with the Twin Cities Drupal Camp, who you've heard about earlier today, if you were here. And I've helped out with a few Drupal Core initiatives and whatnot, but I, and I've been to all the Drupal cons since 2010, every year. That's like my own personal thing that makes me feel like I accomplished something. Anyway, uh, so we're both just members of the C Drupal Community Working Group. And by show of hands, how many people don't have any idea what the Drupal Community Working Group is? Carson? All right. We got a couple of people. All right. Because we often come to events like this and give a little spiel. And I'm not always sure if we're just preaching to the choir, because a lot of like the community-focused folks will hang out together and talk to each other and sort of recycle ideas. So I think part of our idea was we could be a little bit more collaborative today. So maybe we could get some audience participation here today. Does anyone have any experience with the community working group or would like to share any ways that maybe it has affected their life. 
It doesn't have to be a profound way. Members included. I know it, it's, it might be, or oh, all right, yes. Awesome. So I'll, I'll just repeat that again. So you did our code of conduct contact training, which is one of the many things the community working group does. And we have an enthusiastic supporter there. And that is something that is available to people in the community who want to become more skilled in dealing with potential code of conduct uh, issues, sharing the code of conduct. Um, I think some of the people in this room help organize this initiative, but we have information right here. So I'm, I'm just on our website at uh, drupal.org slash community slash CWD G. <laughs> and we offer this training on a fairly regular basis. So we, er, for example, we heard earlier from people at various camps, and most camps would like to have a code of conduct. And so the Drupal community group maintains a code of conduct, which camps are welcome to use verbatim or change. The code of conduct is a document that has evolved over the years, and the camps can use it, and then we offer this training as a way for people who want to figure out what to do if there is a situation. So in addition to offering training, the community working group offers support to those organizers. So maybe they've not taken the training, and something comes up at the camp, and the organizers are like, what do we do about this? None of us are trained to handle a, a situation like this. There are situations where the community working group can provide guidance, assistance, and that's just one of the things that we do. I want to add on to the, um, Matthew's quite a bit taller than me, um, add on to the importance of the code of contact training. What it does is it adds community members who have taken the training, and our code of conduct does not do any good if we don't have people to help us um, with productive dialogues and discussions. And we offer this training, and like I said, it just sort of gives another resource to camps. And we have a list that we maintain of all the people who are code of contact people. A lot of these people travel from camp to camp. And it was for a little while that the DA said that they wouldn't support camps unless they had a contact person from this list. And what we're working on now is um, expanding different kinds of training because there's a cost prohibitive part to this training because it does cost money. So some individuals might not be sponsored. So one of the things that we're working on is um, figuring out a way to do an additional training or a more advanced training. Um, because like I said, that code of contact or code of conduct doesn't do any good if there's nothing to sort of help people use it. So I think I realized we started talking about yeah. what we do, and <laughs> I love that we're just doing that, but because I, you know, again, I don't want this to be another, well, not, not like these are boring or the past ones have been boring, but if we think about that, so who are these people then that are offering this training might be a question that you're asking. So we do have the community working group, which is a large, loosely organized group of people, and there are two different groups within the community working group. So we have the conflict resolution team and the community health team. Does, does, anyone, does anyone know the difference between the two? Oh, good question. Well, yeah, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is on the both, both teams. teams. Great.
Pardon? Yeah, one, one way we like to talk about it is that the, the conflict resolution team is reactive. So when incidents come up, we have a group of people that help resolve conflicts within the community. And the idea is anytime you get a group of people together that are working closely together, or even some of these people that we saw on Monday that have been in the community for 10, 15, 20 years, you know, people eventually get on each other's nerves, just like any community. And so we have this team that helps resolve conflicts and in some cases, you know, needs to ask people to not attend events and things along those lines. And each case is handled on a case-by-case -case basis. And you probably don't hear a lot about all of these, because this happens quite frequently like behind closed doors. It's a private process. And there are a team of these five people currently on it. And so it, it talks about how they work, the meetings, uh, how they, you know, they take notes, but they don't offer any specifics about individuals involved. And then there is the community health team, which is a bit more on the proactive side. So I'm more on the proactive side on the community health team. A lot of these people might serve on both. But we do things like event support, like talking at this event, or like we, uh, Mark and April and I, gave a CWG update session here at DrupalCon. We had office hours where people could come and talk to the community working group. And then we have a group of people that are these subject matter experts. Um, so we have people who we, can, who we can refer to that are maybe have expertise in particular areas of the world or uh, particular subjects like mental health or conflict resolution. You want to say more about that? No, but I will. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> Did I put you on the spot? No, no, no. Okay. I was seeing what's on this page. Um, I also want to note, just for for general practice, if you have. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So. The team support, like the event support, is we, we really try to encourage the community to have their own code of contact, code of conduct contacts. And then we've had an incident one time where someone filed a code of conduct incident against a camp. Well, they can't really resolve that against themselves, so we offered like the support of that. So those are some of those kinds of examples of a, that overarching stuff. Um, the community health team really came together during the pandemic to offer support services and that sort of stuff. Um, we really worked together. Um, you know, when when we talk about the conflict resolution team, that's one subsect, and we're here to support them. But I just want people to know, like, there's definitely like this 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 uh, the community health team is a team of people. So he had talked about them being reactive and kind of being a little bit behind doors and being private, whereas I just want people to know that, uh, sorry, um, the code of conduct is a public issue. I don't, you know, I just want to clarify that, you know, and this is all things that we offer. We do, we really ask for community support when we do all of these measures. Um, we don't always get the community support that we would like, um, and that's why we come out and like, um, talk about these things. And yeah, I was put on the spot. So um, I'm gonna hand it back to Matthew. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> we didn't write out every word, most, but I think we lost our spot in our document here. Anyway, so I was gonna say that one of the things that we do is blog about what we do on our blog. And we don't have a lot of blog posts, but the community Working group also, as mentioned, we, um, uh, we, we do various things in the community. Another thing that we didn't mention was the Aaron Winborn Award, what you saw on Monday. You saw Mark up on stage presenting that. 
And um, we've done blogging, for example, about uh, mental health resources. And when we updated the code of conduct, the most recent time was in 2023. And that was a whole process that involved the community. So the code of conduct was first established in 2010, and it's been updated a couple of times. The most recent time that we updated it, the, the goal was to make the language more accessible, to make sure that we weren't using jargon. And we came through various iterations of the code of conduct. We looked at what other communities were doing, acknowledging that the community working group for Drupal doesn't exist you know, in a vacuum. The, the Drupal community doesn't exist in a vacuum that other people are dealing with these sorts of issues as well. So, you know, we look for issues just like, you know, the uh, we heard earlier, I think we heard about this yesterday about how Tag1 talks with some people from uh, the WordPress community about, you know, sp speed and optimization, uh, performance optimizations in other PHP communities that we can bring. Same kind of thing with the community working group. So. That most recent code of conduct included um, being more specific, more clear about the language, more inclusive and diverse, and as well as more actionable. And we, we, we did expand our list of um, protected communities to be more specific. Um, you know, we had a, a list of, you know, maybe the, the regular eight, the race, the ethnicity. Ethnicity, ethnicity um, gender, and that sort of thing. And we expanded it to include size and age and caste to be very specific. And that will, I think I'm really proud of having those additions because most communities um, aren't specific enough, I think, about what our, what our, um, what our marginalized communities are. Um, one thing I'm very proud of that we've worked on on the community health team is this project called Nudges. Has anyone ever, has anyone had any experience using a nudge or know what it is? So I work in the issue queue quite a bit. I'm in a lot of Slack channels. Um, I see a lot of contention around certain subjects. I see um, conflict, gatekeeping, and that kind of thing, and a lot of escalating emotions. And so one, I'm on the site moderator queue. It's a, a queue where um, people will uh, uh, kind of say what's going on, and they talk about contribution farming. Do people know what contribution farming means? Yeah, well, contribution farming is the practice of going after novice issues or going after issues that don't make a whole lot of sense or create a lot of noise exclusively just to get the contribution credit. And what happens here is it kind of heats up the issue queue because it, it makes a lot of noise and um, it's unfair practices and sort of things like this. And this is what sort of st started this conversation around nudges. And really the project is about creating productive language and dialogue. So for about a year we worked on different templates, we went to the community and we're like, what are the, the issues that you find that escalate the quickest in either you know, the Drupal stack exchange, um, the issue queue, or Slack, and we found that um, gaming the attribution system escalated conversations using ableist language. Does everyone know what ableist language means? It means uses, uses language um, that are tied to disabilities to sort of, um, uh, it sort of, mar it makes the, the disability community feel more marginalized and not as included. Um, we targeted racist language and gendered language and gatekeeping. Does everyone know what gatekeeping means? Okay, so gatekeeping is the language where you're saying like, well, you're just a developer you know, or using language that um, really is reductive to someone's role and place. So we created these nudges that, 
the community can use. Um, there's, there's those six or five nudges, and then we're working on escalating emotions. And what it is is a template that people can put into the issue or into the Slack conversation that just sort of says, hey, we noticed that you use gendered language. You know, here's some resources that you can use. But these are templates that the community can use to help them out. But when we first started using them, people would come to us and say, hey, this thing is happening in the issue queue. Can you post something? And we thought, well, let's, let's create these, these, this resource for the community. And since then, the language around um, maintainers, like with the contribution farming, has become less terse and less aggressive and less accusatory. And it kind of it goes towards an educational swing versus that, you know, wanting to kick people out. You know, we're really encouraging people to use these as a, an education moment versus like, you know, shutting the thing down. So that's the thing I'm most proud of that we've done in the last couple of years is creating this productive um, language and dialogue around these conversations. I thought we could oh. just show a couple of them. In case. So in our issue queue, um, we do have an issue queue, though there's these templates where you can find the mark, markup for them. Um, so inclusive language, you know, the, those are those ableist terms um, because they devalue the challenges of, 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 of our disabled community. And this is something like, um, uh, what's a good one? I'm on the spot, so I can't think. Um, like being blind to something, you know, or being, um, what's Stand a good one? Up. Yeah, having a stand up and then, you know, racist language like having a master branch or gendered language when someone comes in and say, hey, guys, you know, not everyone finds that offensive, but some people do. So they're just the little things that like help people, you know, kind of move through things. And again, you know, it's formatted in green for the issue queue so people can kind of see it like, oh, there's a lot of arguing going on in here. So let's just take a step back. But it's you know formatted so they're so they're very um, prominent when you're doing these things. We've had other communities come and ask if they can use our nudges, and we've had other communities like PHP Tech come in and sit, ask us if they could take a take a sample of it. You know, and so these are really community modeled right now. Um, they give links to the values and principles about why we don't use something, um, and maybe we should do an updated post um, because. Uh, kind of saying what we've done, because this, this, this was along the times when we were still um, figuring out how they were gonna work and how to be used. So I think then maybe the next blog article we can do after the one we're working on is talking about how the community uses these nudges and what the progress we've made. And again, this is something that we like have opened up to the community and if you have feedback, there, there's issues in the issue queue. I don't know how to close that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we had one response. Are there other? So that was a long answer, or not an answer, but there's a tangent. Do we have any other people who want to talk about ways where any other issues, maybe things we haven't uh, mentioned thus far, or have, where they have affected their life or they have uh, experienced any interaction with the community working group or something that's happened? Big question. All right, that's fine. You don't have to say anything. It's a big room. Don't want to put people on the spot too much. The so the community working group, then we have our website, we have our two different teams. We've talked about the code of conduct. We've talked about our code of conduct contact training. We've talked about our blog. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the policy and some of the processes behind how we go about with conflict re uh, uh, resolution. There are other workshops that we do. We've done, uh, for example, during the pandemic, we did some of these adult mental health first aid training. And those are trainings for people uh, in sometimes in professional settings where you can learn a little bit more about how to react to different uh, 
situations where you can figure out like the right language, helping people uh, uh, work through uh, different situations. And so there is, there's training that you can do, and that's something that was offered a few times during the, the pandemic. And there's also been some uh, well-being hours with that, that we've hosted in the past where people could get together and just sort of talk about different issues within the community. So those are a few of the other things that we've done. And there is a charter that the community working group uses. Our, our mission, in a sense, is going back to upholding the, the Drupal Code of Conduct. And as well as somebody else had mentioned, like maintaining some documentation, creating processes in general. So I mean, I think this gives you a general sense of the kinds of things that we do. There's more specifics in terms of like if people really want to see how things are going, if you want to see more of the details where we do our work, we have an issue queue like you know many other camps or modules or themes or in our, set, our case, uh, the groups. So we, we have our meeting minutes here and we have various uh, initiatives that we've had in the past. We're always looking for more initiatives and going into the issue queue for the community working group is one way that you could present your own ideas if you'd like. In addition to talking to us, we're always happy to talk. Is there anything as a community that we can do for you? That is something that we're currently working on, is finding resources. Um, one of the things that is sort of holding us back a little bit are the resources can be an econ they, the economic barrier for some of these trainings for folks who, you know, maybe their camps can't pay $500 for each thing. And so we're working on finding um, ones that have less of a barrier, but the, but we do do that, and then we want some sort of renewal thing. Because I did, I took my code of conduct training before the pandemic, so you know another resource because I've already taken the one like a certification type thing, um, and uh, we're fortunate that Otter Technology with Sage uh, they offer a. a community discount to the Drupal group, but it still is a little bit of a barrier to entry. So yes, that is something that we are like, actively pursuing and looking at, um, looking at like um, more scenario-based that way, because with the being a code of conduct officer, sometimes you just have never experienced that lived experience before and you can't relate to it. And so offering more scenario-based role play workshops, that way you can kind of be able to feel, you know, a little bit more empowered to, you know, have the knowledge behind a shared live or a non-shared lived experience. Yeah, that's a good thing to ask. We have done those in the past. Um, Pre-pandemic, we offered a few workshops. Um, they were sometimes invite only, which we know now um, we need to be a little bit more inclusive with those. But um, it, again, it's a resource thing. It does cost money to have professionals come in and give trainings. So it is, it, if we could find a more, um, vile, like, like I said, it's that economic barrier to entry. Um, but we did offer those in the past, and we've talked about doing it here, but you know, we, we struggle with 
the program committee not necessarily having historic knowledge of past events because they're new this year, or maybe the information exchange didn't happen. Um, but yes, we, we do talk about offering them, but we need that qualified person to really be able to do that. So if there's a community member you know that gives workshops and that sort of thing, send them our way. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Anyone can take it. Um, April post office hours um, via Twitter. How do you promote off or not office hours? How do you promote these trainings? Oh, and they're on the community events page as well. Oh. Okay. It, it shows on your profile. You want to go to your profile? Yeah. Oh, is it? And we actually, anyone can take the, the training, but as a community health team, we vet who gets that check mark through the conflict resolution team. So we do look at that list. And um, we do have Neil Drum on our team who checks that list for us. No one else can check that box. Um, and then you can see who has completed the co code of conduct training. They get a badge, so you can see all the different places where I've been an event code of conduct. So you can kind of use this as a reference page. You know, Amy June has served at these different camps. You can see I've done like sort of, hmm? So we'll do mid camp 2024. And then you could see when you have an event, you could click the organizers, the sponsors, the speakers, and then down at the, did I skip it? Right there. So you can put who your code of conduct officers are. And just as a, like a side note, who your code of conduct officers are, try to have a, a array of people. That way you have you know, um, more inclusive genders, um, depending on where you are. Sometimes you can't always pick what the faces look like, but you know, definitely having that wide array of genders on there is important, just as a side note as an organizer. Yep. Any other questions about that?
No. I, bef I just want to make sure at some point we don't forget to say that the community working group is always looking for people to join. We're you know, actively recruiting at any given time. And we have meetings gen like the generally every other month or so, quarterly. quarterly. And some of the teams, some of the, like the conflict resolution team, I think they meet more frequently. Every week. Every week. But if you do decide you w w would be interested in joining, it's a very, um, you know, it's a duo. Well, I don't know if we still say that. Are we still a duocracy? <laughs> but it is the kind of thing where if you have some idea that you'd like to bring and work on, it's always good to have some fresh ideas. Some of the people have been on this committee for a long time. Um, some people have stepped down. I actually just showed up at a at a community working group round table last year, so I'm still one of the new guy, the new folks. And uh, but I just want to make it clear that if, if this if any of this sounds interesting to you, you can show up. And there aren't I would say it's not a huge barrier of entry <laughs> to enter, but there are a few things that that you can do and to be onboarded and to participate. So. It's very much like a grassroots, not super, I wouldn't, I mean, I would say we're super structured, although we have lots of documentation <laughs> uh, and we, we have agendas and all that sort of thing posted and, and you're welcome. I just join. realized that we don't really announce when we're having a meeting and that's something that we can maybe use as an educational moment. We have a community health channel and we run regular office hours, I think every quarter as well. But announcing when our meetings are, I think might be a good idea um, for folks if they have ideas and want to come to the meeting. But that's a discussion we'll probably have at the next meeting. So, but we do offer office hours too, which is really nice. You know, if you have some questions or you have some ideas about a blog article you might want us to write or some additional resources, and, and we don't actually have a set time where we always always meet, and they are meetings on Zoom. So we're, actually, we're a global team, so we try to be inclusive with our meeting times. Yeah. So I, I actually signed up, I think, to organize the next one. So I'm going to be sending out a, a doodle, or what do they call those? Doodles. Yeah, where people can sign up for times that work. Mark volunteered, I think, to help with the agenda. And you know, then lots of folks show up, and it could be you too. So, <laughs> yeah, they play at all of our meetings <laughs> live. They're good. They're good. That's one of the benefits. I didn't mention that before. <laughs> Any other questions? Things that have come up. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. I hope you got something out of this, and uh, we'll see you around. OK, our next discussion topic for this afternoon is going to be led by uh, John Picosi from Talking Drupal. Uh, we had a collaborator with him, but I don't see him now. So don't. Oh, I need a he may have he may have ditched us for the afternoon. Bag? Yeah, I have one in my bag. I think I have one in my bag too. But. How's everybody doing out there? Oh, you're right. This is fun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, it's on the end. Yeah. I don't know if she was from a Drupal community, but I think I scared a person at the role-playing part of the contact training last week. So. Hmm? A 
Apparently, I got too into it. Um, <laughs> mm, <extended laughs> I committed to the crazy old homophobic lady. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I knew. Okay. You're, um, you'll be talking. Where's my? Just after John. Oh, okay. now everybody. Now everybody can see my calendar. All right, let's do this. Let's do. Quit a few things. What is that? Jeez, everything's up there, huh? Yeah, there we go. Avi, I sympathize with you now. This is hard. Mm. Everybody can try to figure out. So, trying to figure out where my screen is and how I show it to you folks. All right. Loading. Yay, we made it. Go back over here. Get that over there. All right. All right. How's everybody doing? Oh gosh, guys, come on. I'm feel I'm feeling the low energy in the room here. Come on. Come on. There you go. A little better. Okay. There we go. Now those now those uh, those uh, education summit folks, they're like, what's going on next door? That sounds fun. <laughs> All right, I am gonna do a lightning talk here on helpful Drupal resources, right? So uh, a lot of you are longtime community members. Maybe there's some new folks in the room. Um, hopefully there's a little bit of something here that applies, applies to everybody. And um, you know, uh, you'll, you'll get, something, get something out of this. Uh, here's a little uh, idea of what we're gonna talk about. Uh, some podcasts, some newsletters, um, some books, if there are readers out there. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm John, for those of you that don't know me, um, and I'm going to share a list of links. So here we go. Uh, I'm a solutions architect at EPAM, uh, organizer of the New England Drupal Camp, uh, organizer of the Providence Drupal Meetup. I am a co-host on Talking Drupal, and uh, you know when I'm not um, building Drupal websites, uh, I like to travel, long walks on the beach, you know, that sort of thing. Disclaimer, this list is not exhaustive. Um, we are gonna have roundtable discussion a little later. Um, if you have any additions or ideas, feel free to bring them to the roundtable. We can talk about them. Would love to, uh, would love to talk about more resources to uh, help folks out. Hey, there's a big QR code there, so everybody can take out their phone. I, I tried to make it as easy as possible. I wrote a blog post. All the links to all the resources are in the blog post. That QR code will take you there. If you don't get it now, don't worry, it's at the end too, but I'll give you a minute just to take a picture of that. There you go. Sorry. All right, all right, here we go. All right, so first things, podcasts. There are a ton of podcasts out there. Um, I have one of them, but there are many others. Um, so uh, we'll go through these. Uh, Talking Drupal. We're on. Uh, we just recorded 400 uh, episode 450. So there's 450 episodes you can listen to. Um, Lullabot. Um, Matthew left, but Lullabot has uh, been doing uh, their podcast for a long time. Bunch of great content there. Um, Team Talks by Tag One. I think is relatively new. So. That um, could be could be interesting. Um, Mike Anello, everybody knows him. He is also an Aaron Wimborne Award winner. Um, recent, re recently, that's enough. Um, <laughs> Drupal Easy, uh, they do a podcast. He's uh, he's on there with um, a couple other people. And then the Digital Experience podcast, which I think is only on YouTube, maybe. But that's a that's a new that's a new one. So definitely check that out. Uh, news and newsletters. So this is kind of a thing like newsletters used to be like a thing back in the day. They're kind of feel like to me like they're gaining popularity. Um, Talking Drupal actually just started a newsletter, uh, I don't know, probably a year ago, two years ago. Um, April could be a great way to advertise the code of conduct training, dropping it in the, dropping in the newsletter. Um, the weekly drop, I'm sure everybody is on, on that, on that one. If you're not, 
you should be. The Drupal Association has a newsletter, and um, the Drop Times has a, has a newsletter as well, or, or is a news site, rather. Let me rephrase that. Um, but uh, actually, Anoop, do you want to talk about the Drop Times a little bit? Tell, tell folks what you guys do? Because you're, you're relatively new on the scene. I mean, you've been around for a couple of years now, but you want to come up and give a, give a brief, come on, come on down. Anoop John, everybody. Hello. Uh, I hope most of you have seen or come across the Rob Times. Uh, we have been around for the last three years or so. Uh, what we are trying to do is uh, we are making a statement in front of the Drupal community um, towards something larger. The statement that we are making is that, hey, uh, we have to do a much better job of promoting what we do, of working consciously towards addressing some of these larger problems that we usually skirt around, right? Addressing some of these big elephants in the room, right? How do we address the growth of our local communities? How do we bring new people into the community? How do we get more agencies to fund our activities? How do we scale the growth of our local communities, right? All of these. But to prove a point, we are not operating with a limited resource mindset. So I want all of us to wake out of that, right? Get out of that mindset that, hey, we have limited resources, we have limited capacity. So me as a small agency, a super small agency, uh, one individual um, set out to doing something like this, right? It's audacious. Hey, how do you even do that? It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. People ask me, how do you make it sustainable? I don't care how do you make it sustainable. My point is to mo not make it sustainable. My point is to make a point that we as a community can do unbelievably great stuff if we all get out of this notion that we can't, right? Uh, uh, if we all get out of this notion that we have limited capacity and limited resources, we have something that is infinitely um, uh, I that has infinite capacity. We have the power of the community behind us. If we want, we can do that. So drop times is, a, um, but having said that, drop times as a news website is about compiling all these great things that we do as a community, putting it in front of us as a community, and then banking on the power of the community to amplify that and take it out of the community, right? Instead of preaching to the choir, we want to actually start reaching out to a large audience out there in the world. So I believe we have started on that journey in a decent way, and we have been getting very good support from the um, uh, community. We have also been very actively working with the local camps uh, in promoting the camps, in changing the way we look at camps, right? Not just as bringing the 200 people, but also promoting all the speakers way before the camp even starts um, running, right? Uh, way before the camp, camp dates are um, uh, around, right? We start promoting the sessions, the speakers. Uh, we want to change how we look at events and how we market our events, how do we deliver value to the audience, both who come to the event and who are outside who do not come to the event. So this is broadly what we are trying to do. I would love to connect with more people who are um, keen on working towards um, um, cracking some of these hard uh, scale problems within the community. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's see, what's next? Um, so talks, trainings, and tutorials. Um, there are a ton of people on this list. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Like I said, blog post has links to everybody, so you can find out a little bit more. Um, Drupal Tutor, uh, they actually uh, did a great training not so long ago about um, email in Drupal, uh, easy email module. Drupal Easy does, uh, does great trainings as well. Again, Mike Anello, you can watch videos on Drupalize Me. Um, OS training, you might see them at a lot of camps. Um, Drupal TV kind of aggregates camp videos. So quite a few different, uh, different spots you can go for talks and trainings. Of course, the Drupal Association's uh, providing some of that content as well on their YouTube channel, so. Um, books, so I feel like over the last, mm, I don't know, year or so, there have been quite a few Drupal books that have kind of like had a resurgence or come back out new versions. Um, so a couple of them there, uh, Drupal 10 Masterclass, uh, Drupal 10 Development Cookbook, um, uh, Selwyn's actually doing uh, a book online, which is really interesting. So I think it's uh, I think it's like a Git repo and 
you can read all the chapters and that sort of stuff. So definitely worth checking out. Um, and then new and noteworthy. So two things that um, are, I think, interesting resources for the community that are, are relatively new. One is a uh, podcast called um, the Beyond Vlogs podcast. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a brand new podcast they just started within the last year, I think. And then uh, last but not least, um, Mike Miles has taken a, a subset of ChatGPT and turned it into something called Drupal Droid. So you can actually have a chat GPT client basically focused solely on Drupal. Can help you do all sorts of Drupal stuff, answer all sorts of Drupal questions. So that could be, uh, that could be pretty interesting. Like I said, we're having a round table. Would love to hear everybody else's thoughts about resources, talk about more um, specific questions or, or uh, resources that come out of that. Um, I also asked the community because of course, this is the community summit. And um, there were some uh, great other resources. You'll see uh, some people actually in this room or actually on this slide. Um, but Drupal.org, of course, is a great resource. Um, uh, Drupal Slack is a good one. The community working group, you just heard all about that. They are also a wonderful resource. Um, somebody said Slack, uh, Stack Exchange, which I think is good. Um, and then events, you know, Drupal events are, are a phenomenal resource if you're trying to get you know, uh, into the community or, or understand a, a hard concept. So um, there's some great resources up there from the community itself. Thanks anyone, everyone, and uh, if uh, hopefully you join the roundtable and we can talk more about uh, resources in the Drupal community. Okay, we had um, another one or two people who've had to drop out. Um, one of the ideas for a discussion was the, um, there was a blog post um, a few weeks ago um, calling for us to just say Drupal, to drop the number from Drupal marketing. Um, but, um, that person wasn't able to join us. And there was another um, blog initiative, but I don't think the person's here yet, or here this afternoon, um, talking about creating a list of Drupal features to use, again, as a marketing um, thing. So if anybody else has something they'd like to discuss that we have not touched on today, um, if you want to encourage other people to talk to you, now is the time. <laughs> okay. So, um, just like this morning, we have plenty of sticky notes and pens and big whiteboards. So, if you want to gather into groups and discuss Drupal resources or... Um, the community working group and community health team, um, then we'll take about an hour to discuss. Okay. And thank you so much for coming to the community summit today. Um, I really appreciate it.